Crassus sits alone on a commerce district bench, idly bouncing his leg up and down. People and robots alike ply their trade around him, that being the general but important job of keeping the city flying, mainly by fixing and distributing the goods made in the industrial and educational districts. Although there is much business as usual, there is also the added buzz in the air of the slowly gathering crowds from other districts as they wait for the other city to come into view. Crassus, having let some time pass since he arrived, replays a previous conversation in his head. Half-heartedly, he looks up at a nearby street sign and realizes his error. Ah, shoot. Crassus quickly stands up and hurries off down the road, already late to meet with his friends. By the time he reached their actual rendezvous a few minutes later, the medium gatherings of people who had grown to crowd the rails around the edge even further. Though Crassus is still easily able to find Lila and Cole, it doesn't make him less late. Quickly closing the ground between them, he manages to speak before Lila can start taunting him. Yeah, yeah, I'm late. I'd give an excuse, but I, I really don't have one this time. Lila, though not expecting this greeting, still doesn't give up the chance to tease him. Well, thanks for admitting it this time at least. Let's go find a better spot to watch, unless you're gonna get lost along the way and spend multiple minutes wandering in circles. Crassus passes up the opportunity to retort because of the excited murmur from the crowd as something happens beyond the safety rail. Come on already, we're gonna miss it. They quickly made their way into a less dense area of the crowd, just in time to watch as a flying behemoth silently breaches through a cloud bank across the sky. Much like their own city, the city that approaches them has machinery and metal spires galore, airships, monorails, and pilot cores much like theirs. However, one great difference between Brass and this new city was that where Brass was made up of golds, browns, and oranges, the city of iron was made up of silvers and blue grays of the cold metal. Barely a breath was heard as the two massive machines slowly floated towards each other. Many minutes passed like this, bystanders on both sides silently watching the slow spectacle. The two cities soon stopped yards apart. Suddenly, the hissing of wilding torches cut through the air as worker bots started partially deconstructing the edges of both iron and brass districts. Through the blurs of orange and gray motion, structures seemed to spontaneously grow from the metal, the robots constructing bridges and braces to connect the two cities in the sky. Just as swiftly as it started, the work was done. And, just as quickly as it stopped, the crowds on both sides met and crossed in the middle, starting a day of hawking wares, walking feet, and new acquaintances. By noon, the trio had traveled through the iron half of the festival. Cole filled his time by examining the many mechanical curiosities, Lila by exploring the new environment, and Crassus by keeping a vigilant eye out for his culprit. Having exhausted the immediate vicinity of their respective interests, they start picking their way back through the commerce district of their familiar brass. Cole and Lila cheerily compared the exciting things they noticed, as Crassus soaked a few steps behind, having seen no culprit nor evidence. Aren't you two at least a bit worried that nothing has turned up by now? Cole shrugs, responding a, a bit unthoughtfully. Well, nothing's turned up. It's not that I don't think it's important, but it shouldn't have to keep us from having any fun. This evokes a disheartened silence from Crassus, leaving Lila to pick up the pieces. Hey, don't feel too bad, dude. You set out to do something pretty high above the expertise of three sorta kids. Not even the adults have figured out what's going on with the bots. Crassus stops walking suddenly, his attention on a robot in an alleyway, frozen halfway between lifting up a box. Come on guys, I have a hunch. Crassus sets down the alleyway with a determined stride. Well, that's convenient. Cole and Lila hurried to catch up to Crassus. The frozen robot's damage very much resembled Libs from before. But instead of stopping to examine it, Crassus goes right past it. Where are you going? Humor me. Cole and Lila walk close behind him as he turns the corner onto a frozen open maintenance hatch, and goes through, followed by Lila and Cole after a moment of hesitation. 
Yeah, we are not meant to be down here. The tunnel is small, warm, and dimly lit by small lights in the ceiling. The previously ever-present smell of metal sits even heavier in the air down here, but Crassus pushes on towards another frozen robot. Steam pipes rattle and hiss around them as they walk deeper into the bowels of the district, following a trail of broken robot after broken robot. They've walked for quite a while when the cramped tunnel suddenly opens up to into a spacious chamber. The far wall holding what must have been the pilot core, a great mass of assorted machine bits. However, the trio is a bit distracted from looking at the core by the shrouded figure standing at its base. Crassus shouts to get his attention. You! Are you the one doing this? Startled, the figure whips their head in Crassus' direction and immediately books it the other way, dropping what he was doing on the floor in a panic. Crassus immediately chases after them, Cole and Lila close behind. Get back here! 